Hi there, and welcome to this video on GCSE Biology for the AQA specification, focusing on photosynthesis, and in particular on the topic of the uses of glucose from photosynthesis. I'm Shumana from StudyMind, where we help you revise GCSE Biology with our helpful video tutorials, tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, make sure you click the subscribe button. Whilst you are watching, please leave any comments below if you're unsure about anything and let us know if it's your first time watching our videos so we can send you our free revision materials. We also have helpful timestamps below for each part of the video to help guide you through the specification. So let's get started. Hello and welcome to this tutorial on the use of glucose from photosynthesis. So in our last few sessions we had a look at the photosynthetic reaction and also at how we can define the rate of photosynthesis. So on top of this, we're gonna have a look at how we can use the key product from photosynthesis, which is glucose, um, in order to make structures like proteins. So as I said, in the last session, we had a look at how the rate of photosynthesis is affected by various limiting factors. We looked at how we can measure this using the Canadian pondweed experiment, which comes up a lot in exams, so do go back and listen to that if you're not so sure. And finally, we had a look at the inverse law equation. So today is going to be a slightly lighter tutorial, just having a look at the use of glucose and finally at the use of nitrates and how both of these together can be used for plant protein production. So as we've seen in the previous tutorials, um, glucose is a product of photosynth photosynthesis and this is your word equation for photosynthesis. Now there's also a chemical equation which you need to know as well, so do go back to the first tutorial in this lecture series and have a look at that. So what is glucose used for? Well, glucose is a reactant in the reaction for respiration. And remember, re respiration produces energy in the form of ATP. So notice the difference here. So in photosynthesis, glucose is a product. So it's on the right-hand side of the equation. But in respiration, glucose is a reactant, so it would be on the left-hand side of the equation. It's being used in order pr to produce the products of respiration, which include um, energy uh, in the form of ATP. So this means that in plants, plants can use photosynthesis to make the glucose that they then need for their cellular respiration. Now there's a slight problem with this in that glucose is not very good to store as um, a pure storage molecule because glucose is sol soluble. So therefore if glucose is sitting in a plant cell for example it's going to lower the water potential in that cell and therefore water is going to move by osmosis from the outside into the inside of the cell, where the water potential is lower, down its potential gradient, causing the plant to swell up and the cell to burst. So glucose is not a very good storage molecule in this sense, because it's going to cause water movement into the, into the plant cells by, os by osmosis. So therefore we can store glucose as starch. Um, sorry, I shouldn't really say we, because I'm talking about plants. So plants can store glucose as starch. And starch is stored in the leaves, stem, and the roots of the plant. And because starch is not soluble, it's not going to cause this osmotic water movement into plant cells. And therefore, that's why plants store glucose as starch, because glucose is soluble, it's going to cause their plant cells to swell up and burst, whereas starch is not going to have that effect. So glucose can be used by plants to make lipids, and plants can convert the glucose into lipids for storage in seeds. So notice how glucose can be converted into starch for storage in the main part of the plant, you could say, so the, the, um, the leaves and the stem and the roots. But plants can also convert this glucose into lipids in which they store in their seeds. And glucose can also be used to make cellulose. So remember, plant cells have this cell wall structure around their cell, around on the outside of their cell membrane, whereas humans don't have this. So animal cells would not have this, but plant cells do have this cell wall. And the cell wall is mainly formed of cellulose. So we need to manufacture the cellulose somehow, and that's where our glucose comes in. Glucose can also be used to make amino acids. 
Now remember, amino acids are the basic building blocks of cells because they join together to make proteins. So to summarise, there are various uses of glucose. So number one, glucose can be used in respiration to um, provide ATP um, as energy for the cell or for the plant. <coughs> glucose can be stored as starch. It can be stored as lipids in seeds. It can be used to make cellulose for the cell wall and it can be used to build amino acids. So just bear in mind that the examiners often ask questions regarding the use of the products of photosynthesis. So this is where um, this last summary page will come in. Easy marks, so make sure you commit that to memory. So to produce proteins, plants also require nitrate ions. So not only do they need the glucose, but they also need nitrates to make proteins. And that's because proteins are formed of carbon, oxygen, hydrogen and nitrates. And you can get the carbon, oxygen and hydrogen ions from glucose, remember, because glucose has this um, funky equation, chemical equation, C6H12O6, which we saw on the first tutorial um, in this photosynthesis lecture series. And so it, glucose contains the carbon, the hydrogen and the oxygen needed to make proteins but we also need nitrates from somewhere. So the plants, um, sorry, I keep saying we, but um, just remember that I'm talking about plants here. Um, so these nitrates, they come from the soil. And obviously different areas will have different concentrations of nitrate in the soil. So farmers can add fertilizers to the soil in which they grow their plants in order to provide the optimum source of nitrates. And overall, this will increase the rate of protein sodium protein photosynthesis, protein synthesis in the plant, too many words. So not only nitrates are needed for protein production, remember also we have our glucose which is providing the carbon, oxygen and hydrogen. So that's all for today, we've had a look at what the products of photosynthesis can be used for, so glucose in this case, and we've also had a look at how nitrate ions are required by the plant in order to produce proteins. And the way in which the examiners might bring this across to you is they might say, well, you know, what are the various uses of glucose produced in photosynthesis? And you would then list these things that we saw in that summary slide. It might ask you to explain. So it might be a two marker where you have to list and then explain. So you'd say used for respiration. The explanation would be to provide ATP for energy. Um, and then they might also ask you um, what the use of nitrate ions are by plants, and you would say to produce proteins in combination with glucose. So well done, that's all for today. Um, do go back and have a look at the last tutorial, um, because that was really chunky, and this was a little bit lighter, so I hope that was easier for you to follow. And I'll see you for the next tutorial. Thanks for watching this free video from Study Mind. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe to catch our newest videos by clicking below and leave a comment on a topic you'd like a video on. Click here to watch more videos in our series for GCSE Biology or visit our website studymind.co.uk for free past paper compilations by topic and specification.